and welcome to a very Christmassy edition of my illustrated ghost stories. Today's festive tale is set at Bramsill House in Hampshire. Uh, so this house is rumoured to be the or one of the most haunted houses in Britain and boasts an incredible 14 resident ghosts. So in the chapel, visions of a young, beautiful woman with a tear-stained face occur at 3am and it is thought that she is the wife of a religious dissenter who was beheaded in the 17th century and her husband is thought to be responsible for the spectre that is spotted in the stables. There is also a tale of a green man and this is thought to be the ghost of Henry Cope who is a descendant of the Cope baronets who are the owners of Bramshill House. The ghost is so named after its green attire and in life Henry was well known for his eccentricity um, of wearing green, painting his apartment green and even his penchant for insisting on eating green food. He was actually dubbed the green man in life. Um, He died in 1806 after throwing himself from a cliff in Brighton and it is said that he haunts the lake at Brams Hill as too does the spirit of a gardener who drowned there. A crying child is often heard in the fleur-de-lis room and is reported to try and hold the hand of guests. Folklore tells that this is in fact the child of the Grey Lady, so that's the story of a family that's hit by tragedy and they all seem to remain in the house to this day. If you visit the house, you may also bear witness to the spirit of a nun that of a knight in armour, a lady in the style of Queen Anne, a man in a flannel suit who walks the gardens, a lady in 17th century dress, and a young man in 1920s tennis garb, complete with racket, who was thought to be another Cope family member who fell from a train. It's also said that there is something within the gardens that can only be sensed by our four-legged friends and is regularly sniffed out by dogs. But the tale that I'm illustrating here today regards the ghost referred to as the White Lady, who is spotted walking at night in the Fleur de Lis room. And this is where our Illustrated Ghost Stories video gets a bit Christmassy and festive. This tale begins one Christmas in 1727. Anne Cope, the eldest daughter of Sir John Cope, owner of Bramshill House, has just married Hugh Bethel of Yorkshire. After celebrating their marriage, the time has come for their first night in their marital bed. But Anne suggests that before they retire, it might be fun to play a quick game of hide and seek. She is permitted by her guests to have a five minute head start, after which point the guests of the wedding sought to seek her out wherever the Christmas bride may be hiding. No matter where they look though, none of the guests could seem to find Anne. As time went on, the party began to grow concerned. There was neither head nor tail of Anne, wherever their seekers looked. There was no clues, there was nothing that they could use to try and work out where Anne had gone or what had happened. And as the years went on, it was assumed that Anne had fled the house, regretting her marriage to Hugh immediately and unwilling to spend the rest of her life with him. Hugh, however, never gave up hope that his bride might return. And one night, 50 years after that faithful Christmas day, while searching for clues about the house, as he often did, Sir Hugh tapped on an oak panel in the attic, which revealed to him a previously unseen secret door. Through the door, he found a large wooden chest. Inside the chest, upon opening it, lay the answer to the mystery that he saw, but also a very grisly sight. Because within the chest, lay the skeletal remains of a bride in her wedding gown, still clutching her bouquet of mistletoe, and on the inside of the lid were the scratches where the poor bride had tried to resist her tragic fate. Anne's spirit is said to walk the fleur-de-lis room in her bridal gown, whilst the 14th ghost of Bramsall House is said to be that of an aged grey-haired man spotted looking through a window at where the oak chest stands today and is thought to be Anne's mourning groom, Hugh, who unknowingly spent so many years so close to his poor tragic bride. 
Now, this story was hugely popular in the 18th century as a ghost story to tell at Christmas time. This tradition enjoyed huge popularity in the Victorian age, where during the long, cold winter nights, folk and families would gather around fireplaces for warmth and in a group in the dark at this time of year would naturally start to tell each other stories. This story of the bride is known as the mistletoe bow and has spawned oral retellings, songs, poetry and film. I've linked in the comments below to a BFI video restoration of Percy Shaw's mistletoe bow film from 1904 because I think it's a totally charming little film as early cinema always is and especially ghosts in early cinema and the special effects of how they make that I love it it's always a treat more recently though the tale has also been retold by authors like Kate Moss and Jeanette Winterson and there are a few debated points within this tale as regards to its authenticity Firstly, it's associated with a number of stately homes in the UK, although it is widely regarded that Brams Hill House is the most likely setting in line with records and facts that we can find out about what has happened there. It's said as well that although there is a chest on display within the house to this day, that that's not actually the chest from the story and that that is in fact a replacement chest. Um, and there are some accounts somewhere where it says that the original chest was removed by an owner of the property um, and would have been, I think the phrase they used was, suitable to fit a comely lady with, within it, which I enjoyed because I enjoyed the use of the word comely, which we never use anymore. Let's bring it back. But that's beside the point of what we're on about. So one school of thought also is that the ghost of the bride is not actually the ghost of Anne Cope, but in fact that of Genevieve Orsini, a well-to-do Italian woman who married the same year as Anne and met her sad demise entombed within the chest, but that this actually happened in Italy. It was said that after Genevieve died, the chest was then sold to an Englishman and brought over to Bramshill House and that it was when the chest was brought to Bramshill House that the spirit of Genevieve came with it, and that that is the tale of the bride that is spotted in the Fleur de Lis room today. Regardless of the fact and what version of the tale it is most likely, it's true that this story has been told many times by many people over many Christmases. And I, for one, would love the return of the tradition of telling Christmas ghost stories. I don't know if you've guessed this about me, but I quite enjoy Christmas ghost stories and ghost stories in general. And I hope that by making these videos, I can contribute a little bit to the idea that this might be a tradition that can return and that we can be all be part of and all enjoy at Christmas time. So I'd also like to ask if everybody watching this can drop links in the comments to your favourite Christmas ghost stories, whether to hear or to be read to, your favourite Christmas ghost story themed TV shows. I know that the BBC can do some really good specials based on that um, and have done for a few years. Um, and just help spread a bit the love for Christmas videos, Christmas stories and everything that can bring back this tradition. Sharing this story will be brilliant if you know anybody who you think might enjoy a Christmas ghost story and would like to hear this one. Remember as well to like, subscribe and share this video. Um, and my next Illustrated Ghost Stories video is going to be released a bit earlier than usual. And that's so that it's available in time for Christmas Eve. So that it's ready for you to grab a mulled wine, get cosy and enjoy a very special Illustrated Christmas Ghost Story. Thank you so much for coming and listening to my story today. And thank you as always for your views, likes and subscribes. Um, and just your general support for my little ghost story telling project. I hope that it's helped you to feel suitably festive and I hope that you're going to join me here again next time. All right, thank you. Bye.